Hey guys, Clay here from Badger Security Survival, and today we want to talk to you kind of about a current event. It's not really part of any of our series, but it's something that I know a bit about having come from there. Let's do this. All right, so in the, in the national media, you've seen things about Hawaii, the, the volcano erupting there on the island of Hawaii. It's kind of confusing. Not a lot of people get it. That's why they call it the Big Island. But you've seen all of these things about the volcano erupting and all these people who are displaced, and they make it seem like this ginormous apocalyptic event, and that's just purely not the case. Of course, it could turn into one, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's affecting a small portion of an already small landmass. But when you actually look at what happens to the areas that are being affected, that's where you start getting some, some things that can be useful to, to us and you. And that would be the fact that this volcano has been erupting since the 80s. And you need to make sure that you understand that this has been happening. This is not a new occurrence. It's not like the volcano just started erupting randomly one day and, you know, panic set in and everybody's heading for the hills, which in this case, the hill would be the mountain, so you'd want to do the opposite direction. But this has been happening since the 80s. They did have an eruption that kind of affected Pahoa Town a little bit a couple years ago. It went over the roads in some places. Some people were cut off from their houses. But compared to what it is right now, it's, it's that was basically a... A mistake. It, it didn't really happen. They didn't set it off right. But when you think about how this is going to affect the residents of, that, of people that actually live there, there's going to be a huge difference between a natural disaster of that category and a natural disaster of what we're used to here in the mainland United States, that being tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, any number of these natural disasters that are basically, once they're over, you can clear away the debris, reset the foundation or repour a foundation, build your house, and go about your day. I mean, here in, here in Minot, we had a uh, massive flood a couple years ago, and a lot of these houses are already back up, built, all good to go, people living in them, people selling them off, training them off. I mean, it's a big military town, but you can't do that. If you think about it, lava is basically new landmass. What are you going to do with eight feet of lava rock on top of your property? You, you, can't, you can't clear that away and get down to the ground soil very easily. Not to mention that all of the roads need to be resurveyed. GPS will help with that, with that a lot, so will the modern technology. But it's still going to be years. We have, there's, th there's hundreds of people sitting in these emergency evacuation sites. And the, like, the, the Rotary Clubs and these donation sites are worrying about diapers and dog food because you're allowed to bring pets there now what are you going to do with these people after a year when they still haven't even fully redone the roads to get to their property let alone start rebuilding their houses you know this this is this is an event that's semi-permanent it's it's not just uh your house blew over or your house flooded or anything like that this is a, this is a semi-permanent thing i mean your your property value is gone so you sell it to somebody it's still property covered in lava rock it's not a house ready to move into it's not even a, it's not even a property you can get to at this point you know this this is a, a natural disaster that a lot of people don't think about and it, and it's good in that fact specifically because if you actually think about it this is what would happen to a society after a long period of distress or natural disaster or anything like that someplace you couldn't go back to it's a good way to think about how your bug out would go if you could not go back. The point that I'm trying to make with this video is that this is a great example of how a modern government and a modern media would react to a situation that is this desperate. Like I said, this is not a, okay, well, this flood water subsided or the tornado's gone, everybody let's go in and clean all this stuff up and we'll get it all cleared and rebuild. It's, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be work. It's going to be years before any of these properties are even close to what they are. Even if they could get rid of the property, 
they're going to be taking a loss on it. it. This is a huge detrimental bug out situation, if you ask me. This, this should give you an example of how a government would react to mass amounts of people actually needing a place to go. There's tons of other examples, but this is a great one because it specifically talks about how it's, it's a long-term problem. It's some of these other ones with floods that we've had some major floods in the last couple of years. And yes, those are still long-term. There's still pro problems with Katrina after years and years and years. But think about that, where your property is no longer, it's not even recognizable as your property. The trees are gone, the grass is gone. It's, it's new land. It's eight feet of new land on top of your old land. And your only option is to gather up dog food and some other supplies and go to this encampment that is controlled by the government. Now, that wouldn't be particularly a bad thing. I'm not, it, I'm not particularly a anti-government, they're, all, they're all, always out to get us kind of guy, but I would like not to rely on that. Because if it does look sketchy, I'm not going. That's for sure. But I'd like to know what your theory is on something like this. If you were living in some place like Leilani Estates or somewhere down in the, in the Pahoa region, what would you do? I mean, take a look at the terrain. Would you head off into the Kohala Mountains? Head off in the Kau Desert? What would you do? What would your bug out plan be? If you had no other relatives or anything like that, I want to hear what your solution to this problem would be down in the comments. Make sure you look us up on Facebook and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, make yourself ready.